What's up guys, it's Dan. Um, I, today I wanted to make a video primarily based around the, the number one question I get, whether it's on stream, um, even if I'm not playing anything related to Darkest Dungeon, um, or in the comments that you guys leave, or messages I get on Twitter. Um, so here's kind of the, the, the main question I get more than anything. Um, I just got to the champion level dungeons and I'm struggling. I just my A team just got killed, and now I got to start all over again. Help? Do I need to restart? Um, those kinds of questions. With what do I do when I get to champion level dungeons? So what I kind of did today is I, I sat down and I broke out some of the things that are different in the champion level dungeons, and why you're punished a little bit more. And I broke out some of the tips. For, and, and again, this is really centered around newer players or players just beginning to transition to. Um, uh, the champion level dungeon so as you look at some of the differences that you see here um, you have a lot of different options when it comes to different types of dungeons just like you do in any of the others so we're gonna make some assumptions before we get into these these types of dungeons so first of all the first assumption I'm gonna make is if you started champion level dungeons that your blacksmith and weaponsmiths or I'm sorry, armor smiths and weapon smiths should be maxed out. The furnace doesn't have to be. You're just going to pay more more gold for it. Um, same thing when it comes to the guild. The instructor mastery is maxed out, and that typically at least the abbey or the tavern will be maxed out. One or the other, not both, not both. And then as you look through um, the sanitarium, this doesn't matter as much. Um, really doesn't matter as much as the other two so this this piece again is just a convenience um, stagecoach doesn't matter even though it's probably already maxed out if you're on champion level nomad wagon absolutely does not matter and the survivalist doesn't really matter that much um, so I'm gonna make some assumptions that at least those qualifiers are made and if not it's gonna be a lot more difficult on you and those of you who have done you know some speed runs you kinda know what I'm talking about it does become much more difficult without those, but if as a newer player, that's what I'd recommend as far as like the bare minimum goes. Um, so the other assumption I'm going to make is if you're in a champion level dungeon, your characters should be at least level five. Obviously, preferably um, their gear should be maxed, and any of their absolutely must take skills should also be maxed. So like. I wouldn't want to bring Mugo's Cow 21, for example, into a champion level dungeon if I'm a new player, and I don't have the heal spells at least bare minimum maxed out. Now, I bring him all the time um, to all kinds of different dungeons, um, and his aren't maxed out because I'm trying to save money to get to 2 million gold. Um, but it, you guys kind of get the idea. The key skills that you're going to use, depending on the person, need to be maxed out. Next thing would be as you look at your mission types, like we we covered this a little bit before, these mission types are the same as what you're going to find. They're going to be a little more punishing, however, because you're, you're moving to champion. So first recommendation is only choose medium and long dungeons. And I talk about that in some of my other videos for newer players. Same thing. Do not choose short. It's way too punishing. In case something goes wrong, you have no failsafe, which is your firewood to make a camp, um, which means you're not going to have any buffs if you begin to get into a place where you're kind of struggling. So that's, I would say, medium and long are where you want to stay. And I would start with explore the 90% of the rooms. Um, now, not a must-have unless, in my opinion, you're looking for uh, these right here. So activating altars, finding medicine, activating infected corpse. It's critical that you want to bring a scout, whoever that might be. It might be a grave robber. You might want to bring a hound master. Um, somebody who you can trust to scout is critical if you're going to run these dungeons. Now, if you bring a scout to an explorer, it makes it even easier. It allows you to kind of prepare when you're going to camp. So, it, whereas a scout isn't a necessity in these, I'd still recommend it. I think scout's really, really important when you get to a champion level dungeon. It allows you to pick your fights rather than the fights being chosen for you. Um, you can pick and choose where and when you want to engage is the best way to put that. So as you look at uh, some of the next things that, that I'd recommend when it looks to party composition, so I'm going to say that it, it's a must to bring some sort of a healer, and if it's your first couple, you definitely want to bring the Vestal. Um, 
that it's just so you can get your bearings and get get used to what you're going to be dealing with. The next thing would be you have to be able to hit all four rows in champion. This is where a lot of people struggle. So it, by not being able to hit all four rows, it gives you less of a chance to eliminate turns and focus fire when you absolutely need to. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. Um, stun becomes much more important and much more relevant. And some of you may say, Damp, I've seen your other videos. You say that stun sucks. Well, it did a long time ago. Um, but the game's gone through a lot of transitions, and I expect it to go through another one when the DLC comes out, where metas change and strategies change. And I'm going to have to go back through and make all new videos with the DLC because I expect sweeping changes to trinkets and things of that nature. Um, but you've got to be able to bring people that can hit all four rows, like Iron Swan being absolutely imperative. That's a big, big, big deal. Um, and, you know, really being able to hit the back row and being able to take something out in one or two short turns is really important. So the next thing I, I kind of want to get into is, is how do you focus fire in a champion level dungeon vers versus the others? So typically I would always tell you to um, eliminate turns wherever you can. And, and that really applies to any dungeon, but eliminate the turns where you can. And usually that means you're looking for the lowest HP mob without prot. But the other thing you want to make sure is sometimes you need to prioritize a stress dealer over somebody that's going to hit you for damage. And I'll tell you why. It's a lot easier to heal damage than it is stress. And at the end of that dungeon, you can have one HP and you're going to go to full um, HP, whereas it, with your stress you could have 99 and you're going to end up with 99. You could have one and you still carry that over, but your HP is eventually going to be brought back to full when you leave the dungeon. Um, the other thing is that the stress becomes a lot more dangerous at a champion level dungeon and a champion level dungeon is difficult but it's a hell of a lot more difficult when you run into afflictions where somebody wants to skip their turn, something goes bad, RNG isn't good to you, any of those things. So that's where you kind of want to focus and just say, hey, really stress becomes a lot more difficult to deal with. So you want to prioritize those mobs if you can't eliminate a turn. Um, and But in order to get those, a lot of those are in the back row. So you're talking Iron Swan, the um, Plague Doctor being able to double stun is pretty effective for most of the mobs. Um, being able to hit that back row is really, really, really important, especially to hit it hard, and that's why the Hellion's been so popular. Um, okay, so moving on. So some of the attributes and things you want to consider when you're going into a champion level dungeon that are different is dodge is going to be much less effective. And if you haven't noticed that, um, you probably haven't been in a champion level dungeon, but it is extremely difficult to dodge versus where it was pretty much commonplace in... You know, some of the, you look at a um, apprentice level, you look at some of the veteran level stuff. Dodge is super effective here. Um, but what doesn't lose its effectiveness is speed. Speed's going to give you the ability to go before your opponent the faster you are, which gives you the chance to eliminate turns before they can impact you, which is extremely effective. So speed's really important. Accuracy becomes much more important, but still it's not... On most of your characters, you're not going to struggle with it unless you're a leper or you're probably afflicted with something. So you've got to be able to manage those. And then one of the things I see that a lot of people do that I think is a big mistake is they get some of the very rare gear. You know, they get some of this gear and they're like, man, this gear is awesome. And then it adds stress to you. You don't need any help getting additional stress in a champion level dungeon. Avoid these trinkets if you can at all help it. Um, because the additional stress is not worth typically the offset of what's there. Um, when you think about 1% crit, that's one out of 100 swings that you're going to crit if you think about that. So what's that mean? Uh, that means that it's not going to be as effective as what you think it's going to be. Um, now, given you're going to add that typically to 5 or 6% crit, so yeah, it becomes a little more effective, but one out of 20 and then you're going to take 10% additional stress every time someone would hit you, for example. So if you're paying 10% stress for that 1% crit, it is absolutely not worth it. So really, if you're going to look at 10% stress, make sure it's worth that offset because most of the time it's not. You're even better off sometimes using these common level trinkets that are really underrated. Um, like this Surgeon's Charm, it's 15% healing and there's no negative impact, which is really good. 
Um, so, so really look through your, your trinkets and see what doesn't have a negative impact before you run. Because once you get in that dungeon, sometimes you you make that mistake and that stress ends up being the killer. Um, the last thing is, is basic. Make sure you have the correct camping and combat level skills. I mean, that that's pretty basic. We talked about that before. And the last couple things I'll bring up, guys, is, is again, it's pretty simple. It's almost common sense, but save the firewood till you need it. If you can save it all the way to the end, you save yourself some money on your stress bill. Um, but you're going to be new. Don't save it all the way to the end. Use it, but begin to kind of pick and choose when you use it. Again, if you use a scout, it allows you to help plan accordingly a lot better with when you want to camp before you're going to get in two or three or four battles. Um, or, you know, your health begins to get low and then you can camp and kind of buff accordingly. Um, and that that's really it. I mean, th those are the last couple things I wanted to add. So hopefully that helps you guys. I apologize the videos have taken a little bit longer. I was hoping to have some change updates by now and and uh, hoping the DLC would drop, but it hasn't yet. So once the DLC drops, I do expect there to be sweeping changes and trinkets um, and also some of the, the combat skills. When that happens, I'll go through and re-release all the class guide videos again for you. So um, get, please be patient. It, it'll take me some time to go through all of them and do a bunch of testing. Um, but thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys on the stream. Come stop by and say hey for everybody that has. I really appreciate the support. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching. See you guys later.